I want to prophesy to some of you today. I want to decree and declare. This year 2022. The Lord shall make a way for you. Where there was no way in the name of Jesus Christ. In 2022. The Lord shall make a way for you. Where you thought there was no way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God I wish you get that church. God is getting ready to make a way for you. Where you thought there was no way. It all looked, you know, gone. It all looked hopeless. It all looked like I'm cornered. It all looked that the devil is going to have a party now. It all looked that I'm going to be blown away. But just in the nick of time, God made a way and made them pass through. If God tells you to go forward, that's exactly where he will lead you. God never gives you a word and acts contrary to it. That's why you need to read your Bible before you pray. Because when we, when we read the Bible, we understand God's instruction. When we understand God's instruction, we understand God's method of miracles. God gives us teaching before he does a miracle. Look at it. Look at from Genesis to Revelation, all the miracles that God did. He did it with instruction. Most of it. He did it with instruction. Why? Because once you receive the word of the Lord, you can know now that God has to make a way. Because once he commits himself to his word, he cannot go back on it. Are you ready for the way that God is going to make for you in this new year? We're just in the second month, my friend. But God's got some amazing ways waiting on you. You're, you're, if he tells you now, you, you will not do it. You will not believe it. So he will prepare you. And when you're prepared, he'll say, now, move forward. Go forward. Look at verse 21. Exodus 14, verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the east, uh, caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Lord command the east wind to blow this year, and cause doors to be opened to you in the name of Jesus the Christ. The Lord command the east wind to blow this year and cause doors to be opened unto you in the name of Yeshua, Amashiach, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. It is high time for you to understand that God is going to command the east wind oh, to open many doors. There is an east wind of God that's going to blow upon your life. I'm telling you, get ready. You got to get ready. There's an east wind coming. There is a wind of the Holy Spirit coming from the east that's going to, you know, put you in alignment for your blessing, your breakthrough, your miracle, your sign, your wonder, and your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, this pandemic with its mutations and its variants is not going to stop this east wind. That the Lord is going to command. And when this east wind is commanded to blow in your direction. I'm telling you. Every closed door is going to be opened up. In the name of Yeshua. Oh God. Hallelujah. Father I pray today. Give me the faith to believe that statement Lord. That you are all stirred up and ready to blow. To command the east wind to blow. This year for me. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. The first part of that verse. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground. How do you go into the midst of a sea on a dry ground? Because sea is a volume of water. But when God makes the way, even that which was supposed to be a volume of water becomes dry ground. Uh-oh. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground. Listen, with that one verse, we see the beautiful deliverance of God. With that one verse, we see the beautiful. It may not look like it has all that God promised. Sometimes it may look rocky. It may look like, you know, all that was hidden in that volume of water, those rocks, all those things that were huge boulders right at the bottom. I tell you, sometimes you're going to see, you know, things that you never saw when you saw the volume of water. God is going to make everything bare before you and then he's going to tell you. But remember that when my presence goes before you, I will make every crooked part straight. I will make every rough part smooth. I will lower your mountains and I'll exalt your valleys to God be the glory. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh God, I feel an anointing. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to give you some divinely appointed paths for you to walk on. And when you walk into it, my friend, you are going to step into your destiny. When you walk into it, you're going to walk into healing. When you walk into it, you're going to walk into deliverance. When you walk into it, you're going to walk into the full measure and potential of God. When you walk through it, you will walk on the dry ground. There is no more wetness in your life. God's going to dry every teardrop that you ever shed. Goodness. Write this down, please. You shall walk along the way the Lord has made for you this year in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the Egyptians pursued after them into the Red Sea. They thought if, if we follow them, we can get what they got. But what they don't understand is, you don't just follow people into your blessings. You have uh, blessings because of obedience. I cannot follow somebody who is anointed and hope to get anointed. I can follow their teaching. I can receive the, the teaching. I can do all that. But I cannot tap into their anointing by just following them. I've got to obey God like they obeyed in order for me to get what they got. Come on, talk to me. Every single, you know, man and woman of God that is used mightily by God today, they came to that place because they paid a price before they have the price. There was a P-R-I-C-E before there was a P-R-I-Z-E. The, the, the folly, the mistake that the Egyptians did is, they said, since they're going through the Red Sea, we can go to why? Because if we follow the people of God, we will end up where they're going. No. Following God's people does not get you to where you are going. Following God gets you to where you want to go. Israel was following God. They stepped into the Red Sea only because God says, tell them to go forward. Uh-uh. But the Egyptians thought if we pursue them, we can have what they have. No. Because the Bible says the Lord fought for the children of Israel. Look at verse 20, 25. This verse I love so much. I just love this verse. And he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. Now watch this. <laughs> this is where I came. And the Egyptians said, not, not the Israelites, not Moses, not God. I'm telling you the truth from the horse's mouth. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. A few hours ago... Israel was fleeing from the Egyptians. They wanted to put distance between them and the, and the Egyptians before they discover they're gone. So a little while ago, they were fleeing from their enemies. Now their enemies are saying, let us flee from the face of Israel. Why? Because their God fights for them. I came to let you know today, the enemies that have been persecuting you, the enemies that have been hurting you, the enemies that have been going after you, they are going to open up their mouths and say, let us flee from the face of these people because their God fights for them. I wish I had a witness in here. Oh, hallelujah. Get ready, get ready, get ready, my brothers and sisters. You are about to step into a new realm of living in absolute victory. God has 100% victory for his church. God has, I tell you, God has 100% victory for the church. I said God has 100% victory for the church. I said God has 100% victory for the youth of our church and the youth of every church. I said God has 100% victory for every family in Christ. God has, I said God has 100% victory for every Christian family that's walking on the face of the earth. 2022 has got to be the year of possession because the Lord is fighting for you. All you got to do is go forward and take. Let him do the fighting, you do the possessing. Don't change the, the cycle. You don't try to fight and expect God to possess. No. You let him do the fighting and you do the possessing. God says, I'll fight it. Deuteronomy 3, 22. You must not fear them. For the Lord your God himself fights for you. Whatever you are facing in 2022. God says, you must not fear them. I, I don't think God can get more emphatic like than that. You must not. You must not fear. Jesus, help me. 
You must not. Everybody say, you must not. Turn, your, turn to your neighbor and say, you must not. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You must not fear your enemy. You must not fear the doctor's report. You must not fear your, ban your managers, you know, threatening. You must not fear your HODs, you know, you know, all of his intimidation. I tell you, his breath is only in his nostrils. One day he's here, the next day he's gone. If he harasses you too much, I'm telling you, God's going to shut his mouth and make him know that I have to flee from the face of this person because they're God. He's fighting for them. Whoever your boss is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how ruthless. It doesn't matter how much they try to do against you. I got good news for you. God will make a way for you to be blessed. And they have no control over your future. They can threaten, you know, I, I will not let you do this. I, no. God is the one who makes you the head and not the tail. Not men. Our promotion does not come from the east or from the west. Our promotion comes from God. You must not fear them. For the Lord, your God, himself fights for you. I like that. I, I love that word. For the Lord, your God, himself. Himself. He doesn't give it to the angels to fight for you, though they are mighty. One angel, you know, killed 185,000, you know, soldiers in one night. I'm telling you, they're powerful. He could have let them fight it, but there are some battles. He says, no, 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 this is, from, this is for daddy to do for his children. I tell you, we have an amazing daddy. I said, we have an amazing daddy. I said, we have an amazing good, good father. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You do not need to fear them. Why? Because the Lord your God himself fights for you. Look at, look at Deuteronomy 20 and verse 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Look at how many action words are there. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you. Number two, fight for you. Number three, against your enemies. And number four, to give you the victory. Your God is an action God. Verbs only settle in his character. Because a verb is an action word. We're not having a grammar class, but I'm just driving a point home. Amen? A verb is an action word, and God is always in action. You can never keep God passive. That's alien to his nature. God never folds his hand and twiddles his thumb and waits for you to come a full circle. A 360 degree turnaround. No, no, no. God is working for you. God is fighting for you. To give you the victory. So my brothers and sisters. Whether you recognize it or not. This truth daily confronts us. What is that truth? We face an enemy here in this life. That's the truth. Whether we like it or not, whether we recognize it or not, the basic truth that we have to take away daily is we are fighting an enemy here, the devil in the kingdom of darkness. We don't fight people. We are fighting Satan and his kingdom of darkness. Amen? Let me tell you, it's more than what we can see before us. The enemy that we are fighting is more than what we can see before us. It's more... Than another person who we think has wronged us. It's more than another person who we think has wronged us. And here's the biggest one. It's more than our struggles and weaknesses we deal with. It's more. It's more than our own struggles and weaknesses we deal with. So what we need to do is understand that we have an enemy and he's very much against us and he is real and he is fierce. He will stop at nothing to try to bring you defeat and destruction. He will stop at nothing to try and destroy you. But the good news is God is fighting for us. Amen? 
Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you can be assured. The enemy hates truth. The, the enemy doesn't hate you. He hates truth. But if we are living by it, the truth, standing on it, <laughs> and seeking after it, let me say to you today, we will be targeted. People always, believers, new believers, always ask me, why am I going through all this attack? Because you've got the truth. If you are not walking in the truth, the devil doesn't bother about you because you're his bosom pal. But now, since you're walking by the truth, living by the truth, standing on the truth, now you become a target to the devil. Why? Because he hates the truth and because you love the truth, he hates you too. But God's words are true. As silver tried in the furnace of the earth and purified seven times, so is the word of the Lord to you. Amen? This battle might be real. Many times it feels intense. But the good news for you to take away is in every battle, God is fighting for me.